Sam, we are not shy of, of all kinds of information out there on the cattle market. Any opinion of all that combined? Well, you have the on-feed numbers, obviously, uh, you know, placements can't kind of prove themselves. You know, the market more or less expected it. And now it's going to be up to the cash markets, I think, to, to buoy the market. Uh, you know, watch the spreads in an environment like this as well. But the cold storage report, you know, you had the February beef stocks, uh, oh, let's see, fell 6% from January, I think. And you got... I think this is the smallest uh, stocks figure since 2014. So it just feeds into the narrative of, of kind of a tight uh, you know, number situation as we go into the summer grilling season. And so, uh, you know, the biggest short term influence, I think, is going to be, you know, this data on Thursday and how it influences the feeder cattle market over the next 30 to 45 days from a feed cost standpoint. Well, and we haven't really seen any kind of breaks in cost of gain just yet because I know corn, when it was at its lowest, just barely broke four dollars. Now we're trading four twenty, four thirty in a lot. When you add a little bit of basis trade onto that, so the farmer probably paying closer to about four sixty, four seventy for something. This just doesn't seem to be able to get the break, the cost of gain break evens down to levels that they thought they might be able to earlier this year. Well, that's true, and, and yet another reason why we can, uh, you know, probably easily find some corn acres in some of these areas, especially where it's been dry in, in some of those holes. So uh, definitely look for that, uh, you know, again on the feed side of things to provide some short-term influence. When you look at the feeders on them on their own, uh, you know, seeing the spreads rally here as this March goes into expiration, uh, we could see some strength there in the April May, just the same. And keep an eye uh, as we go into spring in that May August spread. Historically, we you know we broke that and have come back in a pretty strong way here, and I think the cash market's going to have to lead that thing. All right, and we trade an awful lot of cattle in that July time frame for the video sales on there. Do you think that they're going to be a little bit of shy of inventory this year? You know, I think it's, I don't know if they'll be shy of inventory necessarily, but, it, you know, again, some of this just feeds into the overall narrative about where we stand. And I think, you know, trying to put a, a finger on, on you know, confidence to actually, you know, get some expansion going on. I think you get into the third and fourth quarter this year, it's possible. Uh, but again, we're just making sure we don't demand, or excuse me, derail the demand side here along the way with an election year. Sure. Up. And you mentioned the uh, um, coal storage report. I noticed on the pork, it was only down like 1% month over month. I think year over year down about 12%. But that's so uh, I know that we've had some really good pork exports. They've been up for several weeks in a row here. We have, and we, you know, we've seen the lean hog index rally basically since the beginning of the year. So we put in a pretty good move there. Um, you know, if we can pound through this 82 mark and lean hogging is, I think it's worth watching. I don't know if we'll do that here initially though. Uh, we've seen a bit of a setback in pork prices here. So it could be time for that June contract to maybe uh, find a little bit of a range. And uh, you know, that 103, 103 and a half mark may be the, may be the high side of it for now. Now, and I've seen the lean hog index, it just keeps kind of just pushing up ever so slightly, but doesn't seem to be able to make the gains of what the futures do.